free, if you will, energy that comes from the surroundings. He was hired by um, J.P. Morgan to work with S uh, Westinghouse and Edison companies and, and in the East Coast. And Tesla said, I've, I've got it made. I think we can now transmit electrical power through the earth, through the ionosphere, without any wires or, or telephone poles. If you gave a device like a free energy device, a generator that would, would uh, service all their needs in their home for free. They could then bring out their creative talents, which they were born with and had been suppressed because they had to toil for a living. They could be tremendous artists beyond, beyond our dreams, tremendous engineers beyond our dreams. J.P. Morgan was not buying it. He said, no, we're going to have to tear this stuff down. So Tesla kind of pulled back into himself and decided, you know, well, I guess it's not time for this. And, well, at, at that time, he was living in the New Yorker Hotel, actually, in New York. And um, there was a fellow by the name of Otis Carr who he's going to school and to supplement his, his income, he worked as a clerk in this hotel. And uh, Tesla and him became acquainted. And Carr was a sponge. He loved science in every way, shape, or form. But he was a natural science. He believed in the same thing Tesla did, that th there's no limits to natural science. And everything should be on a simple level. Tesla said, they're, they're not interested in my, my time. I want you to take everything I can teach you and go in your time and see if they'll listen to you. And if you don't make it, you're going to have to pass it on because at the rate we're going, we're on a self-destructive course. Carr said, I will, I will. And he, he got his own lab started and, and started uh, uh, really getting into a lot of free energy devices and building them. So he built a spaceship? Mm-hmm. He's building small spaceships and, and uh, he had different sizes, different models. So tell us how you met Otis Carr and how you began working with these flying saucers. There's a company, Advanced Kinetics, in Costa Mesa. That's where we were living, in Costa Mesa, California. And they're looking for a research and development laboratory technician. They gave me a job, they put me in the research lab, and I was inventing ideas all day long. I just loved it because I, I like to invent simple ways of doing hard things. And was was Otis Carr working there too? No. I told some friends about, about, about this and what I was doing and he said, well, come to our group. We've got a group here called Understanding. It was created by a, a gentleman by the name of Daniel Fry in California. We could talk about things that were unlimited, not limited. I said, my mission is to see that we have habitation and transportation in, in one vehicle. And he said, well, you, you sound like a guy that's back east getting in trouble right now. His name is Otis Carr. And he put in a patent for a levitation device, and they, they wouldn't give him the patent. They had to, he said, you've got to pull that levitation out and anchor it on the ground, and we'll give you a patent on an amusement device. You cannot use levitation. They brought him out to California. They said, here's your lab. They, it was all built. It had living quarters. It had, uh, you know, machine shops. It had. That's where you did most of your work, I imagine. And this is where you guys worked on the spaceship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long did it take to develop this crap? Day and night, 24-7, we were building these small prototypes. And they would range anywhere from, oh, 12 inches to three feet to six feet, to, you know, in, in size. And they actually flew. They actually levitated. Oh, yeah. Oh, what sure. was the source of the power? Well, it was magnetic in nature. And, uh, and you were actually years. building these for people to sit in. I mean, not just models. These were, these were prototypes just to prove uh, what we wanted and then graduate up to where human habitation could, could get on board and, and, and operate. If you could explain to us very simply how this device, how these craft work. In those days, yeah. we had counter-rotating wheels, one going clockwise and another going counterclockwise. We had a capacitor, we had small magnets, and um, we had what's called a utron. It was a double tetrahedron. That's two ice cream cones put with the open ends together.